This is how to set up multiple on edit events within the same script. So here's the sheet I have and the, I have two tabs, an incoming tab and a process tab. And the two things I want to have happen here on the incoming tab, when I assign red, green or blue, I want a date timestamp in the assigned date. And when I check one of the boxes in process, I want to move the entire row to processed. So I'm trying to do both of those things within the same sheet, within the same script. So let's open up the script editor, tools, script editor. I already went ahead and started by putting function on edit he, e here. And we want these two things to happen, right? So let's start by making the assign RGB. and const r equals e dot range if source dot get name is not equal to incoming or r dot column start not equal to we're looking at column two return r dot offset no rows one column dot set value new date okay so this should do when we assign here let's try that excellent so that's working totally properly if i check here for instance nothing happens i go ahead and say green it does give it the assigned. So that script's working great. Now I want to make it so that processed process moves it. So that script would look like, let's just comment this out. If same start source dot get name not equal to incoming or r dot column start not equal to four. return and then r dot offset we want zero rows one two three columns to the left number of rows one number of columns four dot move two Div dot get sheet by name process. Oh, eat row r dot row start. Okay, we've seen this one before. This should move the entire column or the entire row when we check this. Oops, it doesn't let well, it didn't actually save. All right, let's check out what's going on there. We're gonna need that working anyway, so let's make sure it works right. Well, if you failed, you better give me a log. Why'd you fail? <laughs> Spreadsheet app dot sheet doesn't match the method signature for range dot move to. I forgot to do that. Const dest equals. Sometimes I forget you can't just move it to a sheet. You have to move it to a range in the sheet. Number of rows, column one, number of rows, one, number of columns, four. Let's try that again. Oh, there we go. Perfect. All right, so that one's working. Now let's go ahead and uncomment that back out. Red, beautiful, and let's move it. Oh, it doesn't move. So that we checked it, but it didn't move over. Now what's going on here is it checks the if statements sequentially. 
And because I have this return statement here, when it sees that the name of the sheet where the edit occurred was incoming, but the column of the edit was column four, or was not two of any sort, it returns. And return just quits out of the script entirely. Okay, so there are a couple of ways to write this. I'll show kind of the brute force method and then the much more elegant method, which we'll be using from now on. So we can easily say if the sheet is not equal to incoming return and then if r dot column start equals two do this else if r dot column start equals four do all this and it has this handy feature it's just format documents that it gives us the right tabulation right we can do this let's go check that show screen gives us the date timestamp and moves over okay we can do that but it becomes really messy really quickly and it's very unclear what exactly the script should be doing right oh if it's this return if it's this then do this otherwise if it's this do all this stuff because this isn't really a normal logic gate we're not saying if it's a true value here do this if it's a false value here do something else these are two entirely different operations and really our code should reflect that so i'm going to go ahead and make two entirely separate functions function assigned date time and another one move processed now i still want to have the same escape clauses as above and to make that simplest i'm going to pass source and r and same thing here source and r so I'm passing these two constants that we're declaring in the on edit itself. Okay. And then in here I can call the same if statements we had above. If source.get name not equal to incoming, or, and here it will work because we're going to call each function separately, or r.column start not equal to two return. And then we want this. And here we can do the same thing. Just changing the four, the two to a four. And all the same code. Okay, so now I have assigned date time where I'm passing source and R and move process where I'm going to pass source and R as well. And here it's doing all of the logic. Now I still can't really run these functions. Oh, review permissions. Since I haven't actually run anything and on edits can run by themselves. When you actually try to run it, it runs as myself. So I need to authorize. All right. Cannot read property, get name of undefined. Makes sense. I haven't passed it anything. Any function that you need to pass something in order for it to work, you really have to make sure that something gets passed. You can't just run it independently. So let's delete all this. Now I'm going to call assign date time, source and R, and call move process, source and R. Okay, see that? So here I'm declaring the variables that I'm going to need for both functions, but here is where the functions are actually happening. Let's go try it. Beautiful, it worked. And there's no longer any operable code in the on edit. All the on edit is doing is getting the variables that I'm gonna need for each of the sub functions. And then these sub functions 
are doing the actual legwork. And let's check that. That one's running as well. And if we check the executions, it's still showing as an on edit, right? It's, it's not showing that these sub functions are running because this is the same as calling e.source.getActiveSheet. GetActiveSheet is a function, but it's not going to tell us every single time that we call GetActiveSheet in the executions. That's not what the executions are for. So it's showing that the on edit ran and then it's doing whatever one it can. Or rather, it's going through each of them and processing everything they can. The return value here is now no longer associated with the on edit, but with the sub function. So the sub function will return, the sub function will quit, but the main on edit function will continue to run. So if it runs assigned date time and the edited column was four, it's going to pop into assigned date time, check its if statement and return, but it's returning from assigned date time. Then it moves to move process, checks that column was four and runs it. Now there's one other lovely piece I want to throw in here that'll make on edit scripts much more understandable and useful and less error prone in the future. A lot of the times the questions I get are, why isn't this running? It says source cannot be, or e dot source cannot be found from uh, undefined variable, something like that. And the reason is because you're trying to run the on edit script. We've talked about this before. Don't run an on edit script, but we can make this more evident to the user. We can do if not e, we're using the same syntax as here, right? If column r dot column start is not equal to two, this exclamation point is not. So if not e, or in other words, if e doesn't exist, which would be because it got ran manually, throw, and this is gonna give us an error in our script editor itself. Throw do not run on edit from script editor. So now if I try to run this, it actually prints that here to make it much more obvious what the issue is. So here's the three things we're looking at. If not E, then throw this error. We're declaring the variables that all of my sub functions are going to need. And then rather than doing the work within the on edit function, we've created two sub functions in which the actual work is going to be done. From now on, this is the syntax that I'm going to use. Even if we're only looking at a single on edit function, this is still going to be a much more clear way. So in other words, even if all I'm trying to do is the assigned date, I'm not doing the process, I'm going to write it like this because it's just much more clear what this function is doing and that the on edit is basically just a container in order to make that run. Put that back. I also want to show that since we are passing source and R, as they have already been defined, we can immediately start operating on them. I don't have to reassign them to const source equals source const r e equals r, right? I don't have to do that before I can start using these past variables. I can actually start using them immediately. So this construction is going to be the way that I construct things from now on. It's gonna be much more clear and there's some shortcuts in the assignment of variables and this will also be present in all future on edits. It just makes it much more clear what you can and cannot or should and should not do.